What's up guys, in this video, I wanna make your life a whole bunch easier when you need to go ahead and add rational expressions. Now, the way that I wanna make your life a whole bunch easier is just to look for one little thing, and that is just to factor your denominators before you try to identify the least common denominator. I think we can all agree, finding the least common denominator is probably one of the most, sometimes confusing and most like, I wouldn't say um, frustrating, you know, parts of adding and subtracting rational expressions because it's an extra step. And a lot of times, sometimes the extra step doesn't really make that much sense when we are dealing with, you know, fractions that have variables in them, polynomials and stuff like that. It, it can sometimes get confusing. What I wanna do to make your life easier is just let's simplify this, okay? And because the reason why is a lot of times I always talk about the quickest, fastest, easy way to find the LCD when you're adding and subtracting rational expressions is just to multiply them. That is a really good way to make your life easier. In this example though, we don't wanna multiply those. That's gonna be a huge denominator that we don't wanna deal with. So if you wanna make your life easier, try to simplify any of your denominators first because what's gonna be the part of that is a lot of times they're gonna have factors that are shared. I can't really simplify this. I can't really simplify this. The only thing I really can simplify is this middle denominator. And I recognize this is a quadratic, right? A quadratic trinomial. And so I'm thinking to myself, what two numbers multiply to give me a negative 12 add to give me a one, right? Because that's the coefficient of my middle term. And immediately I'm thinking of what two factors, right? Have a difference, because that's a negative 12, have a difference of one. And immediately comes to mind is four and three. If I need to get a positive one, that's gonna be a positive four and a negative three. Okay, so now you can see that I can just write this down in my factor form. And look what happens. Look how easy now my life is. Because common denominator of all these denominators already have an x plus four and x minus three. I don't need to really create anything. I realize that my least common denominator is right here. It's just the product of x plus four times an x minus three. Now over here, I only have an x minus three. So I need to multiply by an x plus four. Just remember you multiply that on the top and the bottom to produce equivalent fractions. Over here, I have an x plus four, so therefore to obtain my least common denominator, I just need to multiply by an x minus three. Okay, so just a reminder, since we're multiplying these, I am going to insert some parentheses, just so I can be consistent with recognizing, okay, my common denominator of all three of these fractions is x plus four times x minus three, x plus four times x minus three, x plus four times x minus three, right? Whatever I did in the denominator, I did multiply in the numerator. I didn't have to do anything here because this already had the LCD. Right, so when you recognize those something that you can factor out, factor it. Because I just made my life a whole bunch easier um, by identifying the LCD because it was already there within the problem. It just wasn't obvious until I simplified the expression. Now, to simplify this, I need to go ahead and um, distribute here the two. I don't need to do anything with seven. I can distribute the one, but I mean, what are you really distributing to one? It's just gonna be an x minus three. So now let's just go ahead and rewrite all of my numerator, right? My simplified numerator here, all over my common denominator of an x plus four times x minus three. Okay, and now I just wanna identify what terms I can combine. That'd be the two x and the x, um, the eight and the seven, and then minus a three. That's gonna be a three x plus 12 divided by x plus four over x minus three. But wait, we're not done yet, right? Because again, just like I factored in this denominator over here, what do you think we should probably do here at the end? Is factor again. Right? Because again, we always wanna look for something that we can simplify with rational expressions. That's why we taught simplifying rational expressions. So what happens when you simplify, when you factor out a three? When you factor out a three here, you're gonna be left with a x plus four. And uh-oh, guess what happens now? My x plus fours are now going to divide out. That's now gonna leave me with just a three in the numerator all over an x minus three. And there we go, that is going to be our simplified expression. If we wanna make sure we include the excluded values, that are going to be the values that are not a part of our domain. Those are gonna be the values that make my denominator true, um, all the way back from my original equation, not even the simplified equation. So that's gonna be when x equals three, that makes that zero, and a negative four. Now I like this question for maybe a quiz, but in the next video, I'll show you a problem that's similar to this that I'd give my students on their test. I'll see you in the next video.